Good morning, interweb. Let's world build. So we've built some planets and we've put them into orbit. Now let's start thinking about axial tilt. Why? Because seasons. Also known as obliquity, axial tilt is just a measure of how tipped over a planet is. Earth has an axial tilt of 23.4 degrees. That is, its rotational axis, the imaginary line running between the poles about which the Earth spins, is tipped over 23.4 degrees with respect to its orbital plane. This tilt for half the year angles one hemisphere towards the Sun and the other away from the Sun. The hemisphere angled towards the Sun will receive more direct sunlight, making it summer there. Temperatures are warmer, days are longer, and nights shorter. Simultaneously, the other hemisphere receives less direct sunlight, making it winter there. Temperatures are cooler, days are shorter, and nights longer. Year round, the direction of the Earth's tilt doesn't change, so six months later, the situation is reversed. When neither hemisphere is angled towards the sun, here and here, the Earth receives even heating, making it spring in one hemisphere and autumn in the other. Temperatures are moderate, and days and nights are of equal length. Put it all together, and an Earth year looks like this. As far as axial tilt is concerned, Earth isn't special. All planets are tilted, some only slightly, others like Earth a little more so, and others still are tilt-tastic. Planetary tilts can range from 0 to 180 degrees. So if we're building a planet, all we need to do is pick an angle between 0 and 180 degrees and we're done, right? But it's never that simple. First step is to ask yourself what sort of sunrises you want your planet to experience. See, between 0 and 90 degrees, a planet is said to have a prograde spin i.e. it spins in the same direction as its parent star. In our solar system, that happens to be counterclockwise, so on all of these planets, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, just like it does on Earth. Between 90 and 180 degrees, planets will have retrograde spins. So on Venus, for example, the sun will be all backwards, rising in the west and setting in the east. Next, decide whether or not your planet will be inhabited by carbon-based, bipedal, humanoid life forms. According to Stephen Dole, delicate sacks of water like us couldn't tolerate living on planets with more than 80 degrees of axial tilt. So for habitable worlds, choose values between 0 and 80, or 110 and 180, depending on your desired spin. Lastly, consider the type of climate you want. Scientists have run various simulations of the Earth at increasingly higher tilts, and a few common trends emerged. In general, the higher the tilt, the warmer the planet, and the more extreme its seasons will be. High tilt worlds have less permanent snow and ice cover, less humidity resulting in less cloud cover and decreased albedo, i.e. high tilt worlds are better absorbers of light than reflectors. So consider these three parameters and choose an axial tilt that meets your requirements. Got it? Cool, let's build. So here's a star and a planet and its orbital plane running through both centers. Let's give this guy an axial tilt of 40 degrees say. Meaning we mark off 40 degrees from the line perpendicular to the orbital plane, like so. This is the planet's rotational axis. Let's say our star spins counterclockwise, so our planet will also spin counterclockwise. The equator is the first of five major lines of latitude we'll need to mark in. On Earth, we call these lines the Arctic Circle, the Tropic of Cancer, the Equator, the Tropic of Capricorn and the Antarctic Circle. Any tilted planet will have these latitudes, albeit their naming conventions will be different. So why are these important? Well, inside the tropics, the sun will be directly overhead for at least one day in the year. This is where we expect to find rainforests, savannas, monsoons, etc. Inside the polar circles, there will be at least one day per year of total darkness and one of total light. This is a planet's frigid zone. Expect tundra, ice caps, etc. Where these lines of latitudes are located depends on a planet's axial tilt. A planet's tropics will always be located at a latitude of x degrees north and south of the equator, where x is the planet's axial tilt. In this case, that's 40 degrees north and south, here and here. If this were Earth, cities like Ankara, Beijing, Algiers and Washington DC would be considered tropical. To find the planet's polar circle, simply take the complement of your axial tilt, i.e. 90 degrees minus the axial tilt. So in this case, 90 minus 40 is 50 degrees. So 50 degrees north is one polar circle and 50 degrees south is another polar circle, here and here. Again, if this were Earth, you'd be able to experience the midnight sun in cities as far south as Prague, with most of Northern Europe being within the Arctic Circle. Here's a year on a world tilted at 40 degrees. Note the wider temperature swings and the differing path the sun takes as compared with the earlier simulations of Earth. All in all, a 40 degree world would be a pretty weird place to live, but it gets weirder. At tilts greater than 54 degrees, the poles, 
and the equator switch. Wait a minute, what? No, no, seriously, it's true. Here's a planet tilted at 60 degrees. Using the same construction as before, the tropics would be at 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south. And the polar circles will be at 30 degrees north and south. So they've switched. The poles now experience equatorial conditions and the equator experiences polar conditions. Antarctica would be a rainforest and the Sahara a vast ice field. Again, check out the temperature swings and the path of the sun. Now, planets with exactly 0 and 180 degrees of axial tilt are special. Why? Because no tilt means no seasons. Day and night will always be of equal length on every part of the planet. Therefore, tropic and polar circles can't exist on a zero-tilt world. Rather, such worlds would be subdivided into climate bands. A permanent hot zone around the equator and a permanent cold zone around the poles, with a temperate band in between. The planet would look like this all year, every year, until the end of time. Now, 90 degree worlds also lack tropic and polar circles, but they do experience seasons. Crazy ones. At 90 degrees of axial tilt, a planet rolls around its star on its side. For half the year, one hemisphere will be aimed directly at the star and the other directly away from the star. Such a planet would literally be hell to live on. The day-night cycle would be equivalent to the seasonal cycle. That is, when it's summer, it's daytime, and when it's winter, it's nighttime, with each roughly being half a year long. One hemisphere burns in constant daylight, while the other freezes in perpetual darkness. Half a revolution later, everything reverses. Hell literally and periodically freezes over. During spring and autumn, things would be a little more terrestrial. Day and night would be of even length and the temperatures would be more moderate-ish. Kind of like this. And all this craziness is the result of one thing and one thing alone. Axial tilt. Neglected at your peril. Good morning, interweb. So I don't like being wrong, and I particularly don't like being wrong on the internet. It's the worst type of wrong. Public wrongness. But because I'm a terribly flawed human being, every so often some mistakes make it through the filter. If you spot any of these mistakes, let me know straight away. There'll be a correction section in the description of each video from now on, just so everything is as accurate as it can be given this one person setup. I hope you liked this video on axial tilt and seasons and the like. Next time I may try and do a Game of Thrones explanation video, talk about the seasons in Westeros, etc. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know in comments. And as always, genuinely, thank you so much for watching. It blows my mind that people watch these videos. If you haven't subscribed already and you thought this video was good enough to earn your subscription, please do consider subscribing. It really would mean the world to me to have as many people on board as possible on this little nerdy adventure of mine. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I will see you next time. Edgar out.